Mr. Grove because he joined and Mr. Cox because he joined and Laura Hall Beard because she was able to... Uh, after we got our usual score good. What you were saying, after what? After we got our usual score good, while well, we st in the union started a strike fund. Well, we got that build up to several thousand dollars. Well, I head of the union in New York on the, where the head office was. They got us scared that we, we might just form a national union down there, pull out from me my fire. That's what they were scared of. And we well, they had a strike and well, Burge, Cox, a bunch of them, all the, they had expected the whole company to feed us like they had fed us once before. But you see, we had this big strike fund for that purpose. Of course, we expected the head of the union to come in and open up a commissary where we could get food and stuff. And uh, they rebelled on us. They called Barge Cox. He was got to be an officer of the local union, him and a bunch of the others. They called him to a meeting over to the hotel over Holiday Host Motel. And uh, that's what they, and I told Barge and them when they left there. I said, when you come back, you're going to find out that you're going to have to use our strike fund to feed our people with. I said, I, you go over there. I said, that's what you're going to find out. You get over there. Well, I, oh, no, no, no. He wouldn't have it that way. I said, well, go ahead. Over. We get over there. Bless God. They, that's what the head of the union told them. So, Oh, y'all got that big strike for See, they was afraid that we was gonna form our own headquarters down here in the south and leave them out of it. They told them then, you go out to use that strike money if you expect to eat. We're not gonna feed you. When did you tell us about getting your first contract? Well, uh, I wasn't in on the, on the contract negotiation. I sat in one time because I was just secretary of the local. Then uh, our negotiating committee, but they let me sit in one time and uh, they was holding out for a closed shop. The union did. Well, our general manager told me he'd He'd die before he'd agree to a union shop. Well, I called her committee outside and told him, I said, now he's, I said, he's telling you the truth about that. He told you that he'd die before he, he would agree to a closed shop. I says, at that time they had it every year at the end of the, the end of the contract. If you wanted to come out of the union, you could get out. Well, a lot of them got out. But bless God, before they was out three months, they was back down to the union and begging to get back in the union because their boss was just doing them as they pleased then because they, they know they pulled out and they didn't have to protect the union. Well, they, were, they got some real dirty treatments from their bosses, because the bosses know their unions wouldn't protect them, and they treat them rough. And they, they come back begging to get back in the union. You want to tell us about the spirit? Could you say that again? I say the most of them had to go somewhere else to find work. 
They did put those gang up back to work that was involved in the 34th strike. Were there people in your uh, in in your division who were in the 34th strike? Huh? The people in where you worked in the cargo. Oh yeah, they lots of them. Mm -hmm. They you? run a man off <coughs> before we got our union started. They finally run him off, and he was a good man, and me and him worked together, and. Uh, they run him off. He didn't fit you back in the course old as he was, I don't guess, but scared. When did you first start working in the mills? How old were you? Oh, I just got married. Uh, about, I got married when I was 19. I was about 20 year old when I went to work twice the first time. That's where uh, my wife's people used to live. Worked in the mill here, and they moved to Piedmont. Went to work for, that's where I got acquainted with my wife, said Piedmont. So you followed her up there? No, I lived in, I was born and raised in Calhoun County. Tell us what it was like when you first started working in the mills. Well, I first started in Jacksonville, cotton mill. That's where I learned to do what I could do. Worked there till it shut down. And uh, let's my dad start again. And I, Sorry, let's start again and tell me how old you were and how much education you had and then when you started working in Jackson. I just had a sixth grade education because I was as high as you could go. At one time they had a, it was just a big church and they had school there. It was a church and school too. And uh, we had old benches to sit on. There was no such thing as a desk back then. Of course they got the desk and they I quit school because I helped put them down. And my daddy was one of the trustees of the school as well as deacon in the church. And Oops, I hope we're gonna put stop for a minute. Um, if you want to take that cup. All right, could you tell us, could you tell us about uh, how you organized in the mill village? Well, we just visit people's houses and talk with them. Any way we could get them in the union, that's what we was out for. What about the literature? Huh? I want you to tell that story that you told us about distributing literature. Oh, we, me and uh, Ernest Clay, he was a big union man. He didn't allow us, didn't allow how the officer part, but he really believed in the union and get out and work outside and help talk people into joining. And uh, he lived what took him a union paper and throw him on the officer's house, on the officer's porch where they'd find him. Let him know that we was there for a purpose. I don't know what the boss had done with the papers. We didn't care, but we just know that they'd find them on their porch. Well, tell us about the government election. The election for the union. Oh, well, they had the... They set up a, a big booth out there. Do you remember there. when this was? Huh? This was in 1942, wasn't it? Some of them are during wartime. Okay, could you say during wartime we had the yeah. first government election? During wartime, and uh, they had a big uh, band stand out there. There was a big oblong 
grassy lot. That's where we lay around our forward top. And we did a lot of organizing, something that people come up, we talked to them about joining the union long before we ever got one. And so that morning they, they were going to have the election, and the company agreed that they could have it out there and uh, make it easier for everybody because it's right in the center of town, you know. And they agreed to it. Of course, the government forced them to agree to it. The labor board did. And that third shift crowd come out and everybody come out that front gate. Of course, that gate's on the back side and on the lower side. They could have went out. But everybody was involved in it and they wanted to vote. And everybody come out that it was just a sight to see that gang of people stringing across there. We had gobbed of second shift, first shift people that wasn't working. They was out there to see what happened. And when that third shift bunch come out there, the way they went in there and voted, that gave everybody courage enough to go in and vote. We won by, uh, we might have had 50 people voted against the union. The rest of them voted for it. Did you have a celebration? Oh, no. Did you have a big party after that? No. Okay, now let's move back to, you were telling us about uh, what kind of education did you have? Where did you grow up? I grew up, grew up Callan County, sixth grade high to win. At one time, before I got to April, uh, well, well, when I, they went uh, from the primer to the twelfth grade. By the time I got sixth grade, that is as high as you could go. That's as high as I got to go. We had an uh, adult school there, <coughs> and uh, Miss Belle Val, she used to be a principal school in Jacksonville, and they opened up an adult school there, and a church and school where I was born and raised at in the summertime. We put on that at a school. We had one old man who was eighty something year old. What come what come to school? Can you go back now and tell us where the school, what kind of a school building you had, and what your father did, and what you did to help it? Well, he was a farmer. Uh, to just say, my father was a farmer. My father was a farmer. And that's what I grew up on the farm. That's all I know. Till I got married and went to work in the cotton mill, went to work in the Jacksonville cotton mill. And learned how to work, won a few jobs. My daddy in law lived in it. They'd worked at this mill at Dwight, and they moved to Piedmont. And his family worked up there. That's where my wife worked when we got married. How old were you then? I was just, I think I was 19. And when were you born? Born in 1906. How much did you make then and what did you do? Oh. We worked for a little or nothing, you might say, the cotton mill back then. I worked at the Dwight for 10 cents an hour. But I mean, you worked too. What did you do? What did you do for that 10 cents? Well, I had different jobs. I'd run. I'd run I 
was a sweeper, a oiler, I was drawing rope cleaner. I had several different jobs. Run an elevator. Okay, Judy? Yeah. Um, I. Can you start this one, sir? Sorry, sorry. Can you start again? All right. I talked, to, we talked to a lot of people that had been involved in that other strike. Naturally, was scared to death. I, I don't guess I'd have had guilt enough to, if I'd have been involved in the other. But to my age then, I was young, didn't give them red. And that's the reason why I stepped out like I did. Make no difference. If I got fired, I'd find something somewhere. I figured it would. But you had several children then, didn't you? Yeah, I had four or five kids. So I married at 25. This was in the 40s. I had a handful of kids. Now, Barbara, you've been listening to a lot of this. Could you tell us how you feel about hearing about this? Well, it really makes me feel proud of my dad, although I, I knew he was a union man all my life. That's he always said, with a union, you've got better uh, benefits, better chance at making something out of yourself with whatever job you go undertake. And it makes me feel proud of him to know that he was fought for what he believed in and kept on and didn't give up. And uh, everybody says that I'm a fighter. I said, well, I guess now I know where I got it from. <laughs> Took it from my dad. <laughs> well, one of the things that puzzled us is that in many places we've been, including Noonan, people are afraid to talk about the union. Mm -hmm. We haven't found that true in Gadsden. Why do you think that's true? Well, it's been too rough and lived over it. We just were treated so rough that we had to get do something to either be worked to death or starved to death. I think the union was good for Gadsden. Really, that's what I think. It was good to Gadsden. A lot of people was hungry before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I hope, hope organized steel plant. Hope organized Goodyear. Hope organized Sequoia. Of course, it wasn't much that I could do, but I had. I'd go around and talk to people, talk them into, maybe they had well, been a member, talk them into joining the steel plant union. I had some good friends that was, worked at steel plant, and they were doing everything they could to try to get a union. And that's the way they were, the union was formed by getting around talking to people you knew and you weren't afraid of, you talk them and talk them into joining the union. Now, do you think you could have done all that if there wasn't, hadn't been a labor board to back you up? Well, no. I know we could have. If we hadn't had the government backing it. See, Roosevelt said that the people had the right to join a union if they wanted it. That's what they wanted. They had that right. Now, in the early days, in 34, Roosevelt said they had a right to join a union, and they got licked. And later on, when you formed a union, Roosevelt said they had a right to join a union, and you didn't get licked. What made the difference? Well, they had, uh, we had the steel plant organized instead. Good year was organized, and uh, I'd give us strength. We had enough friends work steel plant, and they would talk to people and get them interested in the union. You could get out here for the 
you could talk your head off. It wouldn't do no good if people weren't interested in it. Would you say that? When we started our union, why, we had a lot of the steel workers would talk to the people about the union, say, we got a union, we got my, we got it organized now. Well, I would give us, the people that worked in the cotton mill, say, well, if the big company is a, uh, Jeff State Steel is, if they had to accept the union, what is the reason, why is the reason that Dwight won't have to? That's what they would put up to the people, you see, and talk them into signing cards. I think that explains to me why you were able to do it here in Gadsden and you couldn't do it in a place like Noonan. And uh, I'll tell you another thing that Hope was organizing. They didn't charge you no dues. We had cards. You sign that card, and they give you a card and keep one for the, to work with. And uh, if we had to ask people to pay their dues when they joined, well, we never would have got nothing done. But we done it for your charge. Didn't cost you nothing till after we got organized. After we got organized, we we had a lot of people that paid the dues. Did you have to check off here? Yeah. We won that in the first contract we got with them. What was the <clears throat> what was the happiest moment that you had when in in connection with the union? When we got it organized. I would think it was when you could walk in there and show them you weren't afraid. Yeah. How did the other workers look at you when you walked in there with your badge on your cap? Well, they were amazed. A lot of them were. There was a boy who worked in the first ship. He cleaned half of the drawing rollers, and I cleaned the other half of the second ship. Me and him used the same work bench. And, uh, oh, he just had a fit about me starting that union. So you go get run off. I said, well, if I do, I'll be hunting something else. But he was scared. It was a long time before we ever got him into you. Because he'd worked in the other strike. Okay? Yeah. Okay, hold it just a minute. Well, I was working outside. I wasn't involved in the unit. Well, when I got I'm off sorry, my, could you start again? Say in 34, I would. Okay? 34, I wasn't working in the mill. I was working outside. And uh, <coughs> days I didn't have to work, well, I'd go up because I knew everybody worked in the mill. Used to work with them. And I'd go sit around the picket gates, sit around, shoot the bull. Play horseshoes, everything like that. What did they do? Just like it was when I went to work, when I finally got back on the mill, <coughs> well, my boss come around and asked me, says, uh, They hired me to run a set of drawing. And they had a slum hand running that job. But as soon as I walked in, he put me on the job. The boss had to come around. He put me on the job, and he went back to his job and run his slumber right across the front of him. He said, boy, I sure am glad to see you coming in. Take this 
joy job. So I said, you might want one day over on the other job and less work too. Well, uh, so the boss come around then, the man I was going to work for, I said, is this job you want me to run hard? He said, well, I don't know what I want you to work at. I said, I got to find out something about your union business. I said, well, I harm. I said, well, you tell you, I forget what sort of union he called it. It was one of the organizers, better run off. He called it his union. He said, I won't know if you had anything. I said, well, harm. I said, you know as well as I did that I didn't work here then. I said, I didn't allow no business. I haven't nothing to do with it. But I said, understand, I got my belief about the union is the same as you have. Uh, you believe what you want to about it, and I believe what I want to. Oh, it won't work. Was this boss working there when you started organizing? Was the oh, same was yeah. the same boss what was his response to what you were doing? Oh it can he start with the same boss was working there. Harv was working there when I started organizing the CIO. Start with that sentence and then go on with it from there. Yeah, he Harv. <coughs> Harv Crowder was the uh, boss I was working for at that time. No, I take that back. I was working the second ship boss, Sam Manderson. And Sam Manderson was a worker. He is in that 34th stripe, but he still believed in the union. He just know they just got company paid the organizers to leave town. Of course, they couldn't prove it, but they left all of a sudden. They just left them holding the bag. And they had to go back to work. A lot of people got run off, run out of the houses and everything else. You were in the middle of telling us about this boss who was in the 34th strike when you were when you were starting to organize the CIO. You got a little sidetracked, so let's go back to the boss. Well, I was down, went back to work in the mill, and he'd come around and ask me what hand I had. And he, I said, oh, Harv, I said, you know, I didn't work in the mill when all that was going on. I said, I didn't have no business messing with it. I said, boy, I'll tell you right now, I, I believe in the unions. I said, I believe in it as, as strong as you don't believe in it. I said, I can understand your feeling because you work for the company. You make a little more money than I do. But I want to go make it better living than just the same as you do. And that's the only way we can do it, by organizing union. He just had to turn walk off and left me. And this was your first day back on the job? Oh, yeah. Long time before we ever started union. Now, were there any people from the 34 strike who said, no, I want no part of this, leave me oh, alone, get away? Talk about that. A lot of people were scared, and they'd seen so many people get run off, throw down the houses, and they were scared. You couldn't blame them. I'd have been scared, too, if I'd have been in Bob and Ellen. Okay, I think we've got them. Okay. Do you have any more okay. questions for Barbara? About the one uh, yes, I want her, Barbara, to tell us about uh, being in the Mill Village and uh, what? the. Remember, you were telling about uh, being in your the projects. Uh huh. Oh, uh, well, lived in the Mill Village when I was just a little bitty girl, two or three years old, but then we sort of moved out from there and then in the 50s when they built the Emissats and Projects that we moved in there and it was really a nice place because almost everybody that lived there at that point worked 
for the cotton mill. So all of us kids were like one big family. And my dad, I was lucky my dad worked nights <laughs> because we got to do a whole lot more because all the friends would come over to our house because daddy was hardly ever at home during the night. And uh, we'd play records and get together and mom was always right there with us. And uh, But during the daytime when their dads was at work, my dad was upstairs asleep. <laughs> and so we had to kind of be quiet during the daytime, but at night, we didn't care. <laughs> Mom was kind of, she just fell right in there with all of us kids. And, uh, but it was different having a dad that worked at night. It really was. And uh, he'd come home of a morning, he'd have all that lint all over his head and his face and in well, his ears. Well, I want to ask him what he just told, they told these old people out here, won't know when it's going to be on television. 